Welcome back to Fantasy Intervention, everyone. This is the weekly six pack along with Corey Spela, James Kreese. I'm Juan Carlos Pena, and we're going to kick off some beers that we love and some beers that we're not so happy with. Cheers. If you boys don't mind, I guess I'll just uh, kick it right off, man. And uh, my, my uh, beer for the week, my beer that's on the up for the week is Brandon Ayuk. Uh, it already sounds like a beer name. I mean, yeah. Ayuk, Asahi is actually uh, Japan's most popular beer. So Ayuk, Asahi sounds pretty close. So uh, coming off 115-yard performance on six catches against the vaunted New England secondary, Ayuk is in the midst of his breakout. His first-round stock is taken a while to be showcased, but it's finally here. We've been waiting for this brew for a little while. So after thriving in a tough matchup, Ayuk faces the historically poorest Seattle Seahawks. Through six games, the Seahawks are allowing a league-high 60.2 fantasy points per game to the wide receiver position. That's 12 more points per game than the second-worst Cleveland Browns. Teams are averaging 280 yards on 32 targets per game while completing over 70% of their passes when targeting wideouts. Now, while Ayuk has lined up on the left side of the offense on 67.8% of his snaps, he will have a chance to line up against all three of the main corners from the Seahawks. His 52.9% slot alignment could have him face off against Trey Flowers, who opposing quarterbacks are torching for 124.7 quarterback rating against him. All three corners are allowing at least 12.2 fantasy points per game to the wide receivers, but Shaquille Griffin, who may or may not play in particular, has been a, a fantasy dream matchup. He's allowing 18.6 fantasy points per game to his opponent. With Debo Samuel likely to miss this week's game, expect Ayuk to see a heavy workload, which should continue through the rest of the season. In the fantasy playoffs, he's going to face Dallas, Arizona, and Seattle one more time. All three teams allow over 12 points per game to the wide receiver, and the rookie should produce enough to help get over the um, get your team over the top for this week. In the spirit of the blue moon coming on Halloween night, I am my guy, my beer that I'm grabbing this week is a nice cold TJ Hawkinson. In 2019, yeah. he was the eighth pick of the draft, drafted for that Gronk like player in Matt Patricia's offense. Nor now, normally it takes at least three years for tight ends to start to blossom into real competitors at the NFL level. And in his first year, he dealt with injury, which made him fly under the radar in most 2020 startups. This year, he has not disappointed, especially with him scoring three touchdowns in the last three games. After seven weeks, he's tight end seven with 73.6 fantasy points, averaging 12.3 fantasy points per game. And literally, that's only seven-tenths of a point outside of the top five behind players like Johnny Smith and Mark Andrews. He's leading his team in receiving with 31 targets, 22 receptions, and four receiving touchdowns. Also, he ranks third in, re in red zone targets at his position with a 60% catch rate inside the 20-yard line. He has an overall 71% catch percentage, averaging 42.7 yards per game. And you have to love him. He's a Hawkinson. So crack open a TJ Hawkinson for redraft and for dynasty because this fresh tasting tight end is just getting started. Love it. I'll take a sip to that. Indeed. I think I'll do the same. <sighs> that, that kind of refreshing there, huh? I'd love some TJ Hawkinson. Indeed. The guy I'm cracking open, Christian Kirk, a guy that I've been high on entering the season, a guy my man Sam Wallace has also been high on. He has played six games this season and has only 19 receptions. So it seems, again, kind of odd to have Kirk with his stock up, maybe similar to my Mooney pick last episode. However, in the last four games, he has 15 of those receptions, and in the last four games, he has five touchdowns. Each of the last two seasons, he had three touchdowns each season, so he's already almost doubled it in four games. He has seen his highest snap share of the season in week six and seven with 81 and 79 percent respectively. However, he was playing in the 90 percent snap share in 2019. Uh, but I guess we could kind of assume maybe the injury has hindered that ability and obviously Hopkins. But it is good to see Kirk have his highest snap share the last two weeks. That means he's trending in the right direction. Something that I found very intriguing was that Christian Kirk has eight targets in the red zone. 
Six of those are receptions, and four of those are touchdowns, all coming within 10 yards. So when you bring it to Hopkins, he has seven targets in the red zone with one touchdown coming within 10 yards. So this usage seems very important. Get yourself a Kirk before the price of this one goes up. I like it. Juan, you're muted. Yeah, I love Christian Kirk, Chef. I know I was muted for a second there, but listen, I love Christian <laughs> Kirk, and he's one of, he's one of my guys. And Corey, it's almost like like mental telepathy here, but there's one beer that I'm stocked down on, and you guys are gonna have to bear with me because it's really really popular. Like it's one of these beers that everybody loves, and it's Ezekiel Elliott. Ooh. So we're talking a little bit of dynasty value here, what and happened? even and even for this season. So this brew is a favorite, right? And it holds a high value. It has been an award winner. It's been a mainstay at the yearly beer festival. Like normally you wouldn't trade this beer for any other beer straight up. I mean, why would you, you know, it's your go-to beer. However, after what I'm about to tell you, you may want to trade this brew for another uh, two, one or two up and coming IPAs that are going to drink uh, great for years to come. So if you think Zeke's value right now is slightly down and it's not a good time to sell, it's about to get even lower. We know the situation Ooh. with the offensive line, and we know the struggles they're having between Dalton and who's going to play quarterback, and the issues even next year when Dak comes back. Since 2018, where Zeke averaged 3.0 yards after contact, he saw that number drop to 2.6 last season, and it's already down to 2.4 this year. So at 25, Zeke is at, is at a physical peak. He's peaking right now. He's at the best. He should be having his best season, but the stars haven't aligned that way, and his situation is taking a downturn. So in his next seven games, Zeke is going to play defenses that all rank in the top 13 points in the top 13 in points allowed against the running back. And in six of those games, six of those defenses are in the top seven. So wow. that string of games after if you go through that string of games, it's going to be too late to move Zeke for anything as enticing as what you can currently get. So according to the Dynasty Trade Calculator, Zeke can get you a return of J.K. Dobbins and Chase Claypool or J.K. Dobbins. And Corey just mentioned Christian Kirk. Either combination gets you young players on elite offenses whose values are going to rise. J.K. JK Dobbins is going to be tied at the lead back in the run happiest offense, and he's tied to the Konami cheat code Lamar Jackson. Woo. Claypool is going to be moved to the starting wide receiver ranks after Juju Smith-Schuster inevitably departs, so Claypool's a good option. And Kirk plays on with one of the most electric quarterbacks in the game, maybe that we've ever seen, and he should slide right into the slot in the future as soon as Larry Fitzgerald decides to hang it up. So if you're looking to the future in Dynasty, it's time to trade the well-known favorite for two new brews that are going to be high on everybody's list next season. Great points. Definitely some great points Ooh. right there. Trading in the old for the new. I like yeah. it. Strike while the iron's hot, Chef. Boom, boom. Yeah, well, we're picking on Dallas once again, my friend, and I'm pouring out Michael Gallup. Mm, we wow. still had some hope for Gallup when Dak Prescott was the starting QB in Dallas, but unfortunately, Dak's out for the season. With that being said, he has to deal with quarterback Ben DiNucci this week versus the Eagles and Andy Dalton going forward. He's only had two games this season and he's posted double-digit fantasy points. That was the Giants and the Seahawks, two teams that are in the top 25 of the league for giving up fantasy points to the wide receiver, Seattle being the worst. When the season started, we were hoping for more of a similar stat line like 20 like he did in 2019, averaging eight targets per game and 4.7 receptions per game. Now in 2020, that's come down to 5.1 targets per game and 2.7 receptions per game. Gallup has, an average, has averaged a minuscule 5.1 fantasy points per game over the past four weeks. He's had one touchdown on the season and most recently put up a goose egg against the NFC East rival, the Washington football team. He's a definite drop for me in redraft and someone I'm avoiding going forward in dynasty. Gallup's stock is clearly skunked, so feel free to pour him down the drain. It's unfortunate because that was someone I was trying to invest in, but big, big time. I think I'm, there, I'm there with you, though, unfortunately. With that, the beer pour that I'm going to pour down, talking in Dynasty here, is Drew Locke, uh -oh. quarterback for the Broncos. Locke came into the season with high demand. I guess that 4-1 and one finish to the 2019 season really caught people's eyes. So far in 2020, he is 1-2. and two. 
technically he's one and three because he gets counted for the loss that he exited the game after only five throws and 13 snaps, but we could let that one slide. So I'm going to give you guys some numbers here. We're going to look back at his 2019 games and the 2020 games. 44, 98.7, 14.0, 54.0, 37.9, 60.8, 20.2, and 19.7. Hmm. QBR? Yes. These are the games with his QBR per ESPN. So of those numbers, 50.0 is considered average. That leaves him three out of these eight games being average. He recorded a 3.3 with those five passes against Pittsburgh in week two of the 2020 season. So, Locke will have the rest of the season to showcase his skills, but the most value could be now if another, if another owner is okay with Locke having a shaky start to the 2020 season because of that injury. The, Bronco, the Broncos play the Chargers this Sunday. If Locke cannot throw for throw and play for play with Justin Herbert, things might get a little dicey for the second-year quarterback and Locke. Try and trade this new market beer before the stocks come crashing down on this light ale. I like I it. it. I dig it. Yeah, it's like the Coors Light. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's we, the we Coors Light. Like I mean, no, you no, don't really want to tap that. The college days. So that's been the six pack from fantasy intervention. We'll be back next week with another fresh six pack and we'll let you know how it goes this week with the ones we predicted. Cheers or something like that. Right. Don't forget like, and subscribe. Join our circle underscore on Twitter. Thank you for joining us. I am Corey. You can find me at C.FF on Twitter. I'm Juan Carlos Pena. You can find me at FF one of a kind. And I'm James Kreese. You can find me at FF underscore chef. Cheers, guys. Cheers.